The Galactic Council's Grand Chamber was, as usual, a sight to behold if you enjoyed watching the galaxy's most pompous beings trying to outpompous each other. Today was special, though. The chamber's usual air of self-importance had been replaced by something far more entertaining collective existential dread. Order. I demand order High Counselor Vex Therian's crystalline appendages clinked against the podium, creating a sound somewhere between wind chimes and nails on a chalkboard. The various representatives of the Galactic Council, all 247 species of them, gradually settled into what passed for silence in a room full of beings who breathed everything from oxygen to liquid mercury. In the front row, a Zentorian diplomat was slowly changing colors from their usual serene blue to an anxious mauve. Next to them, a cluster of hive mind picks she were literally buzzing with anticipation, their collective consciousness creating a low hum that was driving the ultra sensitive auditory receptors of the Q Laxian delegation absolutely mad. We are gathered here today, Vex Therian continued, their crystalline form refracting light in what they probably thought was an authoritative manner to discuss. The incident. A collective shudder ran through the chamber. Even the gaseous nebulons, who typically had the emotional range of a particularly uninteresting vacuum, condensed slightly in distress. Point of order a tentacle shot up from the middle rows. It belonged to Ambassador Squishplong of the Molluscoid Confederation. Do we really need to revisit this? This demonstration of Terran madness? I'm still recovering from watching the footage. My therapist says, your therapist's concerns are noted, Ambassador Vex Therian interrupted, their crystals taking on a slight reddish tinge. However, as this incident has led to 17 new emergency protocols, 43 diplomatic complaints, and one very confused stellar anomaly, we must review the full report. Council Member Zixlak, if you would, all eyes, sensory organs, and quantum perception arrays turned to the unfortunate Zixlak. They were a processes of logic a species renowned for their ability to make sense of the universe's most complex phenomena. Right now, though, they looked like they'd rather be processing tax returns for the bureaucratic collective of mindless paperwork. Zixlak's eight eyes blinked in sequential order a sure sign of distress among their kind. Their metallic exoskeleton creaked as they stood, data pad clutched in one of their primary manipulators, esteemed colleagues. They began their universal translator struggling to convey both professional detachment and profound disbelief. What I am about to present is the official record of what is now known as the Terran Incident, or as some are calling it. The day we learned humans don't have a self-preservation subroutine, a holographic display flickered to life in the center of the chamber, showing the research station where it all began. Several council members immediately covered their visual organs. For those who haven't yet heard and honestly, where in the galaxy have you been? This report details the events that occurred at Research Station Epsilon 742, specifically concerning the actions of one Dr. Ravindra Kapoor and their unique approach to stellar phenomenon investigation. The Nebulon representative pulsed in recognition. Isn't that the human who said, and I quote, the laws of physics are more like guidelines anyway? The very same Zixlak confirmed their exoskeleton now creaking in what could only be described as resigned despair. Though I should note that was one of their more conservative statements. The hive mind picks she buzzed louder. We remember when they said watch this those words still haunt our collective consciousness. Yes, well, Zixlak continued, their data pad trembling slightly. This report will cover everything the initial discovery, the multiple and I stress, multiple warnings, the incident itself, and, of course, the aftermath. But before I begin, I should warn you that what you're about to hear defies not only common sense but several laws of physics. The physicists' union is still trying to decide if they need to rewrite their textbooks or just add a footnote that says, except if humans are involved. The High Councillor's crystals chimed for attention. Proceed with the report, Council Member Zixlek, and please try to stick to the facts, even when the facts seem physically improbable. Zixlak's exoskeleton gave one final, defeated creak. Very well. It all began three standard cycles ago, when research station Epsilon 742 detected an unusual stellar anomaly in the Carina Septimus sector. Under normal circumstances, this would have been a routine scientific investigation. However, these circumstances stopped being normal the moment Dr. Kapoor said those fateful words, hey, what happens if we poke it? Several council members whimpered. The report was just beginning, 
and already everyone could tell this was going to be one of those days when they really questioned their decision to welcome humans into the galactic community. The hollow screen flickered as Zuxlak brought up personnel files, starting with an image that made several council members instinctively reach for their safety protocols. Dr. Ravindra Ravi Kapoor Zixlak announced, graduated top of their class at the Terran Science Academy, which, I should note, awarded them most likely to either win a Nobel Prize or accidentally create a black hole both predictions would prove disturbingly prescient. The image showed a human with wild black hair that seemed to defy gravity a trait that would later prove ironically relevant, wearing what appeared to be a lab coat covered in scorch marks and most worryingly what the Terrans called a mischievous grin. Their previous achievements include revolutionizing quantum mechanics by, and I quote from their paper, Asking the quantum particles very nicely to behave, they also once fixed a malfunctioning fusion reactor with what they called percussive maintenance known in less scientific circles as hitting it with a wrench. The Zentorian diplomat's color shifted to an alarmed chartreuse, and we let this individual near sensitive scientific equipment. Unfortunately, Zixlak continued, Dr. Kapoor's success rate was just high enough to justify their unconventional methods. They were assigned to Research Station Epsilon 742, which brings us to our next point of interest. The holoscreen shifted to show a massive space station that looked like someone had asked a drunk architect to combine a snowflake with a disco ball. Multiple arms extended from a central hub, each housing different research departments and habitat modules designed to accommodate the various atmospheric and gravitational needs of its diverse crew. Epsilon 742, affectionately known as the Nerd Nest by its human crew members, was supposed to be the galaxy's premier example of multi-species scientific cooperation. It featured state-of-the-art laboratories, quantum computing facilities, and crucially what were supposed to be foolproof safety protocols. A ripple of knowing groans swept through the chamber. Yes, we all see the problem now Zixlak acknowledged. We fail to account for the fact that humans don't just ignore foolproof systems, they take them as personal challenges. The hollow screen shifted again, this time showing a tall, spindly alien whose head appeared to be mostly occupied by sensory equipment. This is Dr. Neelix-9, the station's head of research safety and compliance. They hold 73 degrees in various scientific disciplines and wrote the galaxy's most comprehensive guide to laboratory safety procedures, or 47,000 pages of it. Dr. Neelix-9 was known for their methodical approach, perfect record-keeping, and ability to cite safety regulations by page, paragraph, and subclause. They were, in every way, Dr. Kapoor's opposite. While Neelix-9 would spend three days running preliminary safety checks before even touching a test tube, Kapoor was known to juggle potentially unstable antimatter containers because, and I quote again, I'm bored and gravity is more of a suggestion anyway. The footage shifted to show various scenes from the station's daily operations. In one corner, a group of quantum theorists argued with a probability cloud. In another, a team of biological research specialists carefully studied what appeared to be a plant that was studying them back. And in the center, Dr. Kapoor could be seen trying to teach a highly confused Dr. Neelix-9 how to do the wave. It was in this environment of controlled chaos that the anomaly was first detected Zixlak continued, their voice taking on the tone of someone describing an approaching natural disaster. Initial scans revealed a phenomenon that defied conventional physics a region of space where the normal rules of reality seem to be more suggestions than laws. The hollow screen displayed a swirling vortex of energy that seemed to be tied in a knot, which should have been impossible for energy to do. Next to it floated a helpful sign that read reality having a bad day please do not touch. The anomaly exhibited properties of both a quantum singularity and a temporal distortion while somehow also managing to emit what one human researcher described as disco lights, Dr. Neelix-9 immediately began drafting a comprehensive study plan that would take approximately 47 years to complete safely. Dr. Kapoor, on the other hand, had a different approach. When asked for their initial assessment of the anomaly, they reportedly said, it's like someone gave a black hole a mood ring and then taught it to dance. We should definitely mess with it. The chamber erupted in horrified murmurs. A representative from the Cautious Observation Society actually fainted. The station's sensors indicated that the anomaly was growing more unstable by the day. Mathematical models suggested it could potentially tear a hole in the fabric of space-time, create a cascade of quantum impossibilities, or worst of all, generate paperwork 
that even the bureaucratic collective couldn't handle. Zixlak paused for dramatic effect, their exoskeleton creaking ominously. It was at this point that Dr. Kapoor made what would become their most infamous statement to date you know what this situation needs. Some good old-fashioned human ingenuity. The hive mind picks she collectively shuddered. Those words, they're like watching a cargo ship approach a black hole in slow motion. Indeed, Zixlak agreed. And much like that metaphorical cargo ship, what followed was a spectacular example of humans ignoring every warning sign in existence. But before we get to that particular disaster, we should discuss the numerous attempts by various species to prevent what they could all see coming. Several council members braced themselves. They knew what was coming next, and like watching a solar system collision, they couldn't look away no matter how much they wanted to. The warning signs Zixlak continued, their exoskeleton now creaking in what could only be described as post-traumatic stress, were about as subtle as a supernova in a paper bag. The hollow screen displayed a series of increasingly urgent communications from various species aboard the station. First up was a memo from the Volperian probability calculators. The tension we have calculated a 99.9997% chance of catastrophic disaster if investigation continues. The remaining 0.0003% involves an unlikely scenario where the universe develops a sense of humor. Dr. Kapoor's response, Zixlak noted, was to write so you're saying there's a chance and draw a smiley face on the report. The chamber groaned collectively. The Volperian representative's fur stood on end, forming complex mathematical equations expressing pure horror. Next came the quantum seers of Proxima Zixlak continued, pulling up another message. They attempted to warn the station by sharing a vision of 16 possible futures. In 15 of them, the station exploded spectacularly. In the 16th, it exploded spectacularly while playing disco music. Dr. Kapoor's response was to create a betting pool on which soundtrack would accompany their potential doom. Staying alive was the favored choice, which some might call tempting fate. The footage shifted to show Dr. Kapoor in their lab, surrounded by what appeared to be small explosions, while Dr. Neelix-9 frantically waved multiple appendages in the background. The first minor incidents began approximately two weeks before the main event. Dr. Kapoor managed to create what they called a tiny baby wormhole in the break room while trying to heat up their coffee. When questioned about the violation of fundamental physics, they simply shrugged and said, sometimes you need to show physics who's boss. A different clip showed Dr. Kapoor juggling what appeared to be glowing spheres of probability. This incident resulted in three lab assistants temporarily existing in five dimensions and one coffee machine achieving sentience. The coffee machine, I should note, immediately requested asylum and is now teaching quantum mechanics at a prestigious university. The Mechanical Rights Advocacy Group's representative beeped proudly. Dr. Neelix-9 attempted to restore order by implementing what they called the Human Containment Protocol. This consisted of a 718-page document detailing everything Dr. Kapoor was not allowed to do. Within hours, Dr. Kapoor had turned it into a checklist. The footage showed Dr. Kapoor gleefully checking off items like Do not attempt to high-five a quantum uncertainty. No teaching temporal particles to dance. Absolutely no using black holes as storage spaces. Stop referring to the laws of physics as more like guidelines, really. The tension aboard the station reached its peak when Dr. Kapoor successfully taught a group of quantum particles to perform a synchronized swimming routine. While impressive, it violated at least 47 laws of physics and made several theoretical physicians cry. A new clip showed various alien scientists huddled in a corner, watching Dr. Kapoor work with a mixture of horror and fascination. One logician was quietly sobbing while clutching a book titled Things That Should Be Impossible. Perhaps most concerning was Dr. Kapoor's growing enthusiasm about the anomaly itself. They began referring to it as the disco ball of doom and were overheard saying things like what's the worst that could happen a phrase that caused three different species to develop new anxiety disorders. The screen showed Dr. Kapoor's research notes, which consisted mainly of doodles of the anomaly wearing sunglasses and questions like, but what if we turned it up to 11? The final warning came from the station's AI itself, which had calculated the odds of success so low that it requested to be transferred to a cargo ship delivering fertilizer to agricultural worlds, claiming it would be more exciting. Zixlak paused, all eight eyes blinking in sequence again. It was at this point that Dr. Kapoor made their most terrifying statement yet. 
They looked at the accumulated warnings, the mathematical proofs of disaster, the temporal prophecies of doom, and said these immortal words hold my coffee. The chamber fell silent, broken only by the sound of several species' anxiety response organs going into overdrive. And this, esteemed colleagues, Zixlak concluded this section, brings us to the main event. I should warn you that what follows violates not only safety protocols but several laws of reality that we previously thought were non-negotiable. The Physicists' Union has requested that any members present take their prescribed anxiety medication now. The footage froze on an image of Dr. Kapoor approaching the anomaly with what humans call a mad scientist grin, while in the background, Dr. Neelix-9 appeared to be trying to calm every safety officer in the known galaxy simultaneously. The High Counselor's crystals chimed nervously. Perhaps we should take a brief recess to prepare ourselves. With all due respect, Zixlak replied, no amount of preparation is sufficient for what comes next. The holoscreen flickered back to life, showing the fateful day that would later require the creation of 17 new emergency protocols and one entirely new branch of physics called things humans really shouldn't be able to do but somehow did anyway. In the primary event, Zixlak began their voice modulator struggling to convey the appropriate level of existential dread, began at exactly 0847 station time. Dr. Kapoor had just consumed their sixth cup of coffee. A detail that several psychological experts have since identified as a critical warning sign that everyone missed. The footage showed Dr. Kapoor practically vibrating with caffeine and enthusiasm, standing before a holographic representation of the anomaly while Dr. Neelix-9 clutched their safety manual like a shield. Dr. Kapoor's opening statement was, and I quote, look, either this will work spectacularly or we'll create the galaxy's first disco-themed black hole. Either way, we're making history. The chamber watched in horror as Dr. Kapoor began implementing what they had dubbed Operation Dance, with the stars a name that made several astrophysicists in the room whimper. The first sign that things were about to go horrifically wrong or right depending on your perspective on chaos, was when Dr. Kapoor modified the station's main deflector array to, in their words, vibe check the anomaly. This involved reprogramming the quantum harmonics to match the frequency of what they called the universe's mood lighting. The footage showed Dr. Kapoor typing away at a console with one hand, while using the other to fend off Dr. Neelix 9's frantically waving appendages. In the background, several other scientists were either trying to stop them or taking bets, on which fundamental law of physics would be broken first. At 0853, the first direct interaction with the anomaly began. Dr. Kapoor initiated what they called a gentle poke at the fabric of space-time. For reference, this gentle poke registered on gravitational sensors three sectors away and made a passing hive mind collective developer stutter. The screen showed the anomaly pulsing with increasingly erratic patterns. Dr. Kapoor's response was to say, Ooh, pretty while Dr. Neelix-9 began reciting safety regulations in what their species considers a prayer. At 0857, the situation escalated. The anomaly began exhibiting what Dr. Kapoor described as dance moves which our physics experts are still trying to explain in terms that won't make theoretical mathematicians cry. It was at this point that Dr. Kapoor made their most audacious decision yet. The footage showed them handing their coffee mug to a horrified lab assistant. Hold my coffee, they said. I'm going to try something stupid. What followed was, according to 17 different species definitions, impossible. Dr. Kapoor initiated what they called a reverse polarity feedback loop with a twist the twist being literal, as they had somehow convinced the laws of physics to do a pirouette. The chamber watched as Dr. Kapoor began what could only be described as conducting the universe like an orchestra. Their movements synchronized with the anomaly's pulses, creating what one observer called a waltz, with reality itself. At 0902, the first major crisis occurred. The anomaly began to collapse in on itself, threatening to take half the sector with it. Dr. Neelix 9's response was to begin evacuation procedures. Dr. Kapoor's response was to say, watch this words that caused three different emergency AI systems to immediately shut themselves down in protest. The screen showed chaos erupting across the station. Artificial gravity began hiccupy peeping causing several scientists to float momentarily before crashing back down. A quantum physics lab accidentally swapped places with the cafeteria, leading to a very confused lunch lady trying to serve soup in zero gravity while surrounded by complex equations. 
Dr. Kapoor's solution to the impending disaster was, in their words, to improvise they proceeded to manually adjust the station's shield harmonics while humming what they later identified as Stayin' Alive by the BGs. Somehow, the anomaly began to synchronize with the rhythm. Several council members watched in fascination as the swirling vortex of spatial impossibility actually began to pulse in time with Dr. Kapoor's humming. A rhythm analyst in the chamber fainted. At 0907, Dr. Kapoor announced they were going to try something fun before anyone could stop them. They initiated what they called a quantum tango with the anomaly. This involved using the station's deflector array to match the anomaly's oscillations while simultaneously introducing a controlled feedback loop that, according to all known laws of physics, should have torn the station apart. The footage showed Dr. Kapoor practically dancing at their console, while in the background, Dr. Neelix-9 had moved from reciting safety regulations to writing their last will and testament. The next three minutes and 42 seconds violated so many laws of physics that the physicists' union had to create a new category of impossibility just to classify them. Dr. Kapoor managed to create what they later described as a consensual reality mosh pit between normal space and whatever the dimension the anomaly was trying to drag them into. The chamber watched as reality itself seemed to bend and flex around the station. In one memorable moment, time began flowing backwards in the biology lab, causing several experiments to unevolve and one particularly surprised plant to return to its seed state. At 0912, just as three separate emergency shutdown systems failed simultaneously, Dr. Kapoor achieved what they called perfect harmony with the anomaly. Through some process that our best scientists are still trying to understand, they managed to convince the laws of physics to, and I quote, chill out and go with the flow. The screen showed the impossible the anomaly, instead of collapsing into a reality-ending catastrophe, began to stabilize. Its erratic pulses smoothed out into a regular rhythm, and the tears in space-time began to heal themselves. In the final step, which Dr. Kapoor apparently improvised on the spot, involved using the station's entire power grid to give the anomaly a high five this somehow resulted in the anomaly, not only stabilizing but also converting itself into what is now known as the galaxy's first self-sustaining quantum dance party. The footage showed the final moments as the swirling vortex of doom transformed into a stable, gently pulsing phenomenon that actually improved faster than light travel in the sector by 27% and inexplicably makes passing ships' crews feel slightly more relaxed. When asked later to explain how they achieved this impossible feat, Dr. Kapoor simply shrugged and said, Sometimes you just have to show the universe your funky moves. The screen showed Dr. Kapoor celebrating their success by attempting to teach Dr. Neelix-9 how to dance, while in the background, several physicists were quietly having existential crises. The final readings from the incident showed that Dr. Kapoor had not only prevented a catastrophic collapse of space-time, but had actually improved the local spatial stability. When asked about the mathematical principles behind their success, they responded by saying, Math. Oh, I was just going with what felt right. This statement caused several mathematics purists in the chamber to require immediate medical attention. And so, Zixlak concluded this section, their exoskeleton creaking with what might have been admiration or terror, what should have been the galaxy's most spectacular disaster instead became its most improbable success. Dr. Kapoor had, through what they called vibing with the universe, and managed to turn certain doom into a slight improvement in spatial geometry. They then celebrated by teaching the station's AI to break dance. The chamber sat in stunned silence, broken only by the sound of several species updating their definitions of impossible and success. The aftermath Zixlak continued, their exoskeleton now squeaking with what could only be described as bureaucratic PTSD, was as chaotic as the event itself, though with significantly more paperwork. The hollow screen displayed the flood of diplomatic messages that arrived within hours of the incident. First was a strongly worded letter from the Physics Preservation Society. Formal protest the laws of physics are not suggestions. They are not dance partners. They are not, as Dr. Kapoor put it, just being dramatic we demand immediate action before humans discover they can high-five quantum mechanics. The Vulparian probability calculators sent a one-word message how this was followed by a request for extended leave to reconsider their career choices, Zyxlak noted. Three of their best mathematicians are still in therapy, muttering about statistical impossibilities. The screen showed Dr. Kapoor being interviewed by a panel of senior scientists. Their explanation didn't help. 
Look, it's simple, they said, casually juggling what appeared to be small portions of space-time. The anomaly was just having a bad day. Sometimes you need to show the universe that you care about its feelings. Also, everything's more fun with disco music. The immediate consequence was the creation of the Human Handling Protocols, a comprehensive guide to dealing with human scientists. Section 1, paragraph 1 simply states, when a human says watch this evacuate immediately. The footage showed various new warning signs being installed across the station. No teaching quantum particles to dance this means you, Dr. Kapoor. Physics violations require proper paperwork. Coffee consumption to be monitored by AI. High-fiving space-time strictly prohibited. The bureaucratic collective had to create an entirely new department just to handle what they called human-induced reality aberrations. Their first act was to issue Dr. Kapoor a fine for excessive creativity in the face of certain doom. Dr. Kapoor's response was shown next. They paid the fine with a quantum probability of currency that somehow existed in a state of being both paid and unpaid simultaneously. The bureaucratic collective's accounting department is still trying to process it. Perhaps most concerning was Dr. Kapoor's influence on other species. We have reports of young Zentorians attempting to vibe-check their experiments. A group of logical processors were caught trying to teach differential equations to dance. Even Dr. Neelix-9 was observed attempting to. As they put it, go with the flow though they insisted on calculating the flow's exact velocity first. The screen showed various new protocols being implemented across the galaxy. Mandatory reality stabilizers in all labs with human researchers. Emergency disco containment procedures. Coffee consumption limits in sensitive research areas. It required no fun officers for all human science teams. Zixlak paused, all eight eyes blinking in unison. And now, esteemed colleagues, we return to the present, where we must address the fundamental question, what do we do about the humans? The High Counselor's crystals chimed thoughtfully. The data is concerning. In the past cycle alone, humans have violated 147 immutable laws of physics, introduced chaos theory to perfectly ordered systems, and somehow taught a black hole to purr. Point of order the Cautious Observation Society's representative stood, while the humans' methods are unorthodox, we cannot deny their results. The Kapoor incident, while traumatic for our physicists, did improve FTL travel efficiency. And give us a headache, muttered the logical processor's delegate. Perhaps suggested a previously silent member of the Quantum Understanding Guild, we should consider that the human's apparent disregard for impossibility might be useful. The chamber erupted in murmurs. The very suggestion that chaos might be beneficial was enough to make several order-loving species develop stress patterns. The evidence supports this Zix lack admitted reluctantly. In the past year alone, human scientists have solved three unsolvable problems by, in their words, poking it until something cool happens. The holoscreen displayed a series of successful human experiments, each more improbable than the last. The common thread was the complete disregard for what should be possible. Therefore the High Counselor announced, their crystals taking on a resigned hue, we must adapt. The new human scientific integration protocols will include the following guidelines. All human scientists must be paired with a designated no-fun officer, coffee supplies to be treated as potential reality-altering substances. The phrase watch this to be classified as a Class Three emergency alert. The physics laboratories to be equipped with reality stabilizers and dance-proof flooring. All experiments to be rated on the Kapoor scale of probable chaos. Additionally, they continued, we must acknowledge that while humans are terrifying, they represent a unique approach to universal problems. Sometimes, it seems, the universe needs less calculation and more vibing. Several species shuddered at the use of the word vibing in an official capacity. As for Dr. Kapoor Zixlak concluded, they have been reassigned to a new research station with reinforced reality shields and a dedicated team of anxiety counselors for their alien colleagues. Their latest project proposal, titled Teaching Quantum Entanglement to Play Jazz, is under review. The chamber watched one final clip Dr. Kapoor in their new lab, enthusiastically explaining their latest theory to a thoroughly confused alien audience. Maybe black holes are just stars that need a hug, they proposed, while behind them, their no-fun officer was quietly banging their head against a safety manual. And so, Zixlak finished, their exoskeleton creaking with final resignation, we must accept that humans are now part of our scientific community.
They ignore impossibility, treat universal constants as polite suggestions, and somehow succeed through methods that make our most brilliant minds question their sanity. But perhaps the High Counselor added, their crystals shifting to a contemplative blue, that is exactly why we need them. In a universe of order and logic, sometimes you need a species crazy enough to high-five an anomaly. The chamber fell silent, each species contemplating this new reality. Finally, a junior member of the probability analysis group spoke up. So, what are the odds Dr. Kapoor will cause another reality-bending incident? 100% Zixlak replied promptly. They already submitted a proposal titled, What if we try to moonwalk through a wormhole? The collective groan that followed was probably audible in several dimensions. In her new lab, Dr. Kapoor sneezed, causing three reality sensors to go off and her no-fun officer to die for the emergency protocols. Just another normal day in a universe that had learned to expect the impossible from its most chaotic species. End report.